So in 2021, the 6K Pro was released. And since then, I've seen some very interesting comparisons and funny enough, quite a bit of hate. And that's because the wrong people were talking about the camera. In this video, I'm going to speak to the aspiring DP and editor because this is who I believe the 6K Pro was really made for. And it's still a solid option to buy or rent in 2023. I make this video and next thing you know, Blackmagic drops a whole new pocket camera. Who knows? I mean, actually, I don't know anything, but it could happen. You know, NAB is right around the corner. I have looked at other cameras, but there's something about this camera that I can't get away from. It just gives me a peace of mind when I'm using it for documentaries or other projects. When you spend enough time with the camera, you just build this confidence and you know the limitations and you know the strengths of it. The 6K Pro is not a hybrid camera. Well, duh. It still baffles me that people pick up this camera and immediately compare the autofocus and then complain about it, make a video to complain about it. And then they go to the battery life and complain about it. Like what? Sadly, because the price of this camera is $2,500 which is an amazing price. People tend to put that into the categories of Sony, Panasonic, Fuji, and other mirrorless cameras on the market. Now you have to understand something with production cameras, which this camera is kind of prepping you to use, is that you will address the battery life. You will address the focusing. You will address the stabilization and all those different things with other supports. A lot of times people take this camera and want to fit it in the world of a hybrid camera that's small, that has IBIS, has this, that, and the other autofocus, and it's not that camera. You really have to understand that. Heck, I bought myself a Fujifilm X-H2S, and I used that for my uh, content creation. That's what I'm actually filming this on right now. And it's perfect for what I need for that. And I have used this camera for productions, but I felt limited in a lot of different ways. All that being said, you will address these things. It's naturally that you're going to do that, and you should do that. So now, why should a DP, an aspiring DP, or a current DP, or an editor, why should this matter to you? Well, if anything, if you care, the image is probably the most important aspect of this camera, or if any camera, you get. Not so much the resolution, though 6K does help, but color information, dynamic range, and the flexibility of the codex should be at the top of your list. Now, personally, I do not care about H.265, H.264, those smaller, tiny little files. No, get them out of here. I don't care about those. Give me ProRes, give me B-Roll, give me something that's chunky, information dense, color dense, all those things. I want that information. And to be honest, at this point, I would rather someone who's learning how to do grading and shooting and all that stuff, I would rather start with B-Roll than any other codec because it is so forgiving. Now, if that doesn't make you a lazy, filmmaker don't get that twisted it doesn't make you a lazy filmmaker it's actually more difficult to get it wrong <laughs> if you're using b-roll you know what i mean like there's so much so you have so much flexibility in that space now the more you do it the better you'll get at understanding how to expose it and then you can quickly and easily understand what to do and what not to get wrong but being in this space is better i think to learn from than it is anything else the second thing that's really great about this camera is just all the intangibles that this camera delivers on i'm talking about variable frame rates i'm talking about anamorphic d squeeze gyroscopic inform gyroscopic is that gyro information like all those things that you don't really think about this camera has really decent uh, preamps for internal recording exposure tools and so that's that's what helps you as a filmmaker or helps you get the language of it when you're using it as well. So those things, the intangibles really matter about this camera as well. Now, when it comes to rigging this camera, I use the wooden camera cage system. Um, that is the half cage with the you know top handle, the bottom plate for the dovetail system. I think they call it like the quick dove release or something like that. Um, of course, my uh, Anton Bauer batteries or my Wasabi batteries um, with the railing system, follow focus, all that. All of that helps and that can be very nimble and modular. I can build it out to last all day with bigger batteries or I can just put my Anton Bauer battery that attaches right underneath the camera and I can have this lightweight 
run and gun four to five hour setup. And that's what I used when I was an Israel shooting a documentary. And that was fantastic. And so for the audio too, when I rig it up, I use the wooden camera A box. And it has two mini XLR ports that plug into the camera and then, you know, gives you the full XLRs. So, you, so that allows you to plug up any other mic to it. And I think that's fantastic. You have one and two, so you can split that as well. So you can have one with a lapel system and the other one going to like a boom mic here. It's just, it's just, it's very ideal. Of course, you already thought about another camera that can do pretty, pretty much the same thing, but with autofocus, and that is the C70. And the C70 is great too. I'm not, I'm not doubting that. Like those cameras should be looked at for this type of work. Um, but you're paying almost four thousand dollars more because you're getting autofocus. So it's just like, is that worth it? Is it worth it for your workflow? That's what you have to think about. Some of you might not start to say like, oh, I don't want to rig it up because it's going to get too bulky, this, that, and the other. I'm, I, I, boo hoo. It's like, come on. Like, you, you, if you're aspiring to do this type of work, you're going to encounter bigger rig setup. If you want to work on an RE, if you want to work on a RAV, if you want to work on even having an Ursa, all these cameras, Venice, like those things are 30 to 40 pounds and you're complaining about a 10 to 15 pound camera. You gotta, you gotta rethink some of your priorities if you wanna use those bigger cameras and how to rig certain things properly like this system starting here is going to help you in the long run. So just don't, don't worry about those little things that you hear from other content creators. Listen to the people who are filmmakers like myself in this space. But hey, if you find this video helpful, let me know in the comments below and I would love for you to just like this video and subscribe. That will greatly help the channel and the content that I'm making. And yeah, okay, I will, I'll catch you guys on the next rant I'll put out eventually. All right, see you.